He is known for being a Franco-Swiss political thinker and writer on political theory and religion. He is recognized for his contributions to the concept of liberty, refining it as a condition of existence that allowed individuals to turn away interference from the state or society. His name is Benjamin Constant. In the early 19th century, a fervent classical liberal emerged as a prominent figure in the political and intellectual landscape. His name was Henri Benjamin Constant de Rebecca, better known as Benjamin Constant. Born in Switzerland, Constant became a renowned political thinker, activist, and writer, leaving a lasting impact on the concept of liberty. Constant's journey began as a committed Republican, supporting the revolutionary movements of his time. He found himself at odds with Napoleon and sought refuge in Switzerland and later in the Kingdom of Saxony. However, during the Hundred Days, Constant surprised many by aligning himself with Napoleon once again. He continued to play an active role in politics during the French Restoration, serving as a depute and becoming the leader of the liberal opposition. Known for his eloquence, Constant was a celebrated orator in the Chamber of Deputies of France. He passionately advocated for the parliamentary system and championed the principles of classical liberalism. His ideas on liberty were groundbreaking, emphasizing the importance of individual autonomy and the ability to resist interference from both the state and society. Constant's influence extended beyond French borders. His ideas inspired movements such as the Triennial Liberal in Spain, the Liberal Revolution of 1820 in Portugal, and the Greek War of Independence. His views on liberty also resonated with the November Uprising in Poland, the Belgian Revolution, and even reached as far as Brazil and Mexico. Benjamin Constant's legacy as a fervent classical liberal has left an indelible mark on political theory. His refined concept of liberty, defining it as the freedom from interference, continues to shape the ideals of freedom and individual rights. As we delve into his life and ideas, we uncover a profound understanding of the human condition and the pursuit of a society that values personal autonomy above all else. Benjamin Constant, a philosopher known for his deep insights and philosophical contributions, had a unique perspective on life. He once said, my life will recur in exactly identical fashion, reflecting his belief in the cyclical nature of existence. Born into the Constant de Rebecca family, he came from a lineage of French Huguenots who had sought refuge in Switzerland during the religious conflicts of the 16th century. Raised by his grandmothers after the untimely death of his mother, Constant received a private education in Brussels and the Netherlands. During his time at the Protestant University of Erlangen, he had the privilege of mingling with the aristocracy, gaining access to the court of Duchess Sophie Caroline Marie of Brunswick Wolfenbuttel. However, a romantic affair led to his departure and he found himself at the University of Edinburgh, where he formed friendships with notable figures like James Mackintosh and Malcolm Lang. Constance's return to continental Europe in 1787 marked a turning point in his life. Influenced by the ideas of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, he embraced the growing movement that challenged the privileges of the European nobility. However, his family disapproved of his actions, criticizing him for omitting part of his last name. It was during this time in Paris that he encountered Isabelle de Cherrière, a prominent Dutch woman of letters who played a significant role in publishing Rousseau's Confessions. Together, they penned an epistolary novel, and Cherrière became a maternal figure and mentor to Constant. In 1792, Constant's life took another twist when he was appointed to the court of Charles William Ferdinand, Duke of Brunswick Wolfenbuttel. However, the outbreak of the War of the First Coalition led him to leave the court and embark on a new chapter. He married Wilhelmina von Kram in Braunschweig, but their union ended in divorce in 1793. It was in September 1794 that Constance Path intersected with the remarkable Germaine de Stahl, a woman of immense intellect and wealth. Both deeply influenced by Rousseau, they formed a powerful intellectual partnership that spanned from 1795 to 1811, making them one of the most celebrated couples of their time. Constant and de Stahl admired figures like Jean Lambert Tauline and Talleyrand, and their collaboration produced profound insights and contributions to philosophy. Constant's philosophy and life experiences offer valuable lessons for us in our daily lives. His belief in the cyclical nature of existence reminds us that life is full of patterns and repetitions. By understanding this, we can gain insights into our own lives and find meaning in the recurring events and experiences we encounter. Additionally, Constant's ability to adapt to different circumstances and form intellectual partnerships highlights the importance of collaboration and open-mindedness in navigating life's challenges. Paris, the city of lights, had witnessed many tumultuous events throughout its history. Amidst the chaos and political upheaval, one man's philosophy emerged as a guiding light for the people of France. Benjamin Constant, a prominent philosopher of his time, found solace in the principles of bicameralism and the parliamentary system. After the reign of terror, where fear and violence had gripped the nation, 
Constant became an advocate for a government structure similar to that of Great Britain. His ideas influenced the creation of the Constitution of the Year Three, which established the Council of 500 and the Council of Ancients. These institutions aimed to bring stability and representation to the French government. However, Constant's relationship with the ruling powers was not always smooth. In 1799, Napoleon Bonaparte reluctantly appointed him to the Tribunate, a legislative body, despite their differences in views. Constant's speeches and his association with the influential Madame de Staël raised concerns for Napoleon, eventually leading to his withdrawal from the Tribunate. During this time, Constant found solace in the company of Julie Talma, the wife of actor François-Joseph Talma. Their correspondence revealed compelling human stories and offered Constant a glimpse into the lives of ordinary people affected by the political turmoil. Constant's journey took an unexpected turn when an assassination attempt on Napoleon failed in 1800. The subsequent fallout led to the exile of Madame de Staël and Constant's decision to leave Paris. They embarked on a trip to Prussia and Saxony, where they encountered renowned figures such as Friedrich von Schiller and the Schlegel brothers. As Constant's life unfolded, he faced personal challenges, including a secret marriage to Caroline von Hardenberg. He returned to Paris in 1814 during the French Restoration, advocating for a constitutional monarchy. However, his relationship with Madame de Staël deteriorated, straining their connection further when their daughter, Albertine, married Victor de Broglie. Amidst the changing political landscape, Constant's beliefs remained steadfast. He became an opponent of Charles X of France and a prominent figure in the liberal movement. His eloquence and passion made him a leader within the Chamber of Deputies, the lower legislative house of the Restoration-era government. In recognition of his contributions, King Louis Philippe I provided Constant with financial assistance to alleviate his debts. He also appointed him to the Concile d'État, where Constant continued to influence policy and advocate for change. However, his journey came to an end when he passed away in Paris on December 8, 1830, leaving behind a legacy of philosophical insight and political activism. Benjamin Constant, one of the early proponents of liberalism, had a unique perspective on freedom. Unlike many of his contemporaries who looked to ancient Rome for inspiration, Constant found practical models of freedom in Britain. He distinguished between the liberty of the ancients and the liberty of the moderns. The liberty of the ancients, according to Constant, was a participatory republican liberty. It allowed citizens to directly influence politics through debates and votes in the public assembly. However, this kind of liberty came with a price. Citizenship was a demanding moral obligation that required a significant investment of time and energy. In order to facilitate citizen participation, there was often a sub-society of slaves who performed much of the productive work, allowing citizens to focus on public affairs. Ancient liberty was also limited to small and homogeneous societies, where citizens could easily gather in one place to discuss and transact public affairs. On the other hand, the liberty of the moderns, as described by Constant, was based on civil liberties, the rule of law, and freedom from excessive state interference. Given the size of modern states and the establishment of a mercantile society where almost everybody had to work to earn a living, direct participation in politics became impractical. Instead, citizens would elect representatives who would deliberate in parliament on their behalf, saving them from the burden of daily political involvement. Constant's distinction between the two types of liberty has important implications for our daily lives. It reminds us that freedom can take different forms depending on the circumstances. While direct participation in politics may not be feasible for everyone in a modern society, the liberty of the moderns emphasizes the importance of civil liberties and the rule of law. It encourages us to exercise our rights and hold our elected representatives accountable, ensuring that our voices are heard in the decision-making process. As we navigate the complexities of modern life, Constant's philosophy reminds us that freedom is not a one-size-fits-all concept. It prompts us to critically examine the systems and structures that shape our society and to actively participate in shaping our own destinies. By understanding the different dimensions of liberty, we can strive for a society that values individual freedoms while also ensuring the common good. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.